Arriving too late in the afternoon was really... <laughs> she arrives when she wants. <laughs> yes, indeed. We were inspired by the Netflix series Bridgerton to take a peek inside life of Regency England. Our friend Angela from the fabulous YouTube channel My Take on Home and Garden has requested a video about the etiquette of paying social calls. Angela and Jeff, we hope you appreciate our attempt at home decor. This is for you. <laughs> Firstly, it was essential to have one's own calling card. Every gentleman and lady who wished to call upon friends and acquaintances would first need to have their own calling cards made. These were usually made from plain, excellent quality paper and were engraved. Beautiful cases were made to keep these cards in. A married lady would refer to herself using her husband's name, as in this example, Mrs. William Howell Mead. A lady remained in her carriage while her groom took the card in. The card was conveyed to the mistress of the house, who would then decide whether or not to receive the caller. If the mistress was not at home, it was a rejection of the visitor. Cards were placed on a silver salver in the entry hall. The more impressive names were displayed on the top. The larger the pile of cards on your tray, the more popular you appeared. Just like today, the equivalent would be the number of likes on your Facebook posts, the number of Instagram followers you have, or the number of subscribers on your YouTube channel. On that note, if you wouldn't mind hitting subscribe, <laughs> <laughs> We'd greatly appreciate it. <laughs> For the recipient, calling cards were a wonderful way of recalling who had come to visit and which calls needed to be returned. They were also effective in letting one know where one stood in the social order. A turned down corner indicated that the card had been delivered in person rather than by a servant. Social connections were usually formed through a series of meetings usually beginning with morning calls to the homes of those in fashionable society. Morning calls were usually undertaken in the afternoon and certainly never before 11 o'clock. Arriving too late in the afternoon was seen as really bad form because it looked like you were trying to invite yourself to dinner. These clothes are suitable for staying indoors and receiving female callers. To take advantage of the light, women could continue with their needlework a morning call did not usually exceed half an hour. 15 minutes was the norm. In London, a woman paid morning calls on her social equals or inferiors. But she would not call on her social superiors unless they had called on her or she had received a card. A person new to the area waited for calls to be made to them by those already established before making calls of their own. The topic of conversation was tightly controlled by the rules of etiquette. There was a huge list of unacceptable topics. To question or to even compliment someone on their dress may be considered impertinent. Any mention of pregnancy, childbirth or other bodily functions was considered rather coarse and carefully avoided. In the country, it was acceptable for a man to make a call or leave a card with someone of higher social standing if they were new to the neighbourhood. A gentleman would ask for the mistress of the house if it was a social call and he would ask for the master of the house if it was a business call. A card was left if the lady of the house was indisposed or not at home. It was acceptable for a gentleman to call on the daughter of the house if she was above marriageable age or was a long-standing friend. Callers were received by men in their business room or library or by women in their drawing room or morning room. A lady, whether married or single, did not call at a gentleman's lodgings. Thank you, Angela, for that. We've learned something about Bridgerton life that we didn't already know. If there's something about Bridgerton life that you want to know about, drop it in the comments below and we could make an episode about it. And give you a shout out. Bye! Bye.